My name is Melissa. And my name is Mitch. We work for a small nonprofit land trust called Kittitas Conservation Trust, otherwise known as KCT. Today we are going to share the story of a conservation and restoration project we completed on an important part of the upper Yakima River. In the early 2000s, the Hunley family approached KCT and other conservation partners to discuss protecting over 400 acres of their property that surrounds the long reach of the Yakima River. Like all good conservation projects, it took some time, but in 2010, a conservation easement was secured protecting 431 acres of prime habitat. You can see the conserved lands outlined in pink. An important part of this project is that it permanently protects over three miles of the Yakima River shoreline. The property is connected to other conservation lands held by the state and conservation easements held by KCT within the Suncadia Master Plan Resort. Part of what makes this property special is that it contains a variety of critical habitat types, including wetlands, two tributary streams, river floodplain, and upland forest. These lands provide migratory corridors and are home to a wild range of native species including deer and elk, bears, otters, beavers, raptors, wetland and songbird species, woodpeckers, amphibians like toads and newts, steelhead trout, migratory bull trout, and Chinook salmon and other native salmon and trout species. But conservation was just the first step. We also knew that restoration could improve the health of the river, floodplain, and upland forests. Logging, mining, releasing large amounts of water from the dams for irrigation in the summer, and development have all had an impact on the health of our rivers and forests. Some of the natural features, such as side channels and streamside vegetation, had disappeared over the past 50 years, and we wanted to see if we could improve that. We convened a team of local specialists to discuss the restoration potential of the property. KCT worked with river engineers to document the existing conditions and identify the ways we could enhance and restore the natural processes. This work used tools such as relative elevation maps to understand the river's geomorphic history and current condition. This information guided the design development and flow modeling to ensure we mitigated the risks, such as flooding and recreational use, and achieved the restoration goals. We worked closely with landowners, technical experts, and other important stakeholders to ensure we came up with the best design possible. Our final designs included re-establishing two historic side channels, placing large wood in the channels to create salmon habitat, and planting thousands of plants in the exposed areas on the right riverbank. All this work set up the permitting process so we could actually do this work on the upper Yakima River. An important component of this work was understanding wetlands and improving their function for water quality. It took over four years to design, permit, and fund the restoration work. It was a lot of work, but it was worth it. We call construction the fun part because it really is the reason we do our work. Years of planning lead to this project, but often it only takes a few weeks of yellow machines to complete the work on the ground. But before we can begin, we have to isolate the areas we are working in so we aren't harming fish and other creatures. We remove the fish and use sandbags to construct barriers so we don't send a lot of muddy water out into the river. Because working to restore historic side channels can be mucky work. We installed wood in the newly dug side channels to provide fish better habitat and help reconnect the river with its floodplain. Moving the water out onto the floodplain spreads out the flood water and decreases high flows. It also increases the amount of water being absorbed into the ground, all of which improves water quality. To keep water moving into the side channels, we built special flow deflector structures. In a project like this, you avoid working in the river when you can, so we got innovative. Our contractor used a vibratory hammer attached to a large excavator to drive the piles into the ground for structure stability. Once the piles are driven in place, the deflector logs were installed. Once completed, we removed the small barrier and reconnected the Yakima River to its historic side channels. Shortly after the flow is introduced, we see clean, clear water flowing in the side channels, immediately providing the water quality and habitat benefits we were looking for. But restoration is not all about big yellow machines digging side channels. The right bank of this section of the Yakima River had little vegetation on portions of it, and we knew it would be a lot better for fish, wildlife, and people if we changed that. So we teamed up with Mid-Columbia Fisheries Enhancement Group's planting team and put in a lot of plants. There are a lot of ways to put plants in the ground, and we use most of them. 
best. Well, one of these innovative ways involved using a stinger to get water-loving plants root deep enough to keep them happy. And for the upland plants, Mid-Columbia Fisheries used a tractor mounted to augers and installed the plants by hand. The next step was to reduce competition from other plants and noxious weeds. We placed weed barriers, seen here in black, around the plants. A huge thanks to our partners at Mid-Columbia Fisheries Enhancement Group and the volunteers who completed most of the work. To ensure success, we invested in an irrigation system to give the upland plants a foothold during their first few years in the ground. We were able to irrigate 4,400 plants, all except the water-loving plants installed with a stinger. Perks of this system are that it minimizes the number of people needed and the amount of time spent watering plants. And it also provides for water conservation. Another important element of this project was the education opportunities it created. The 8th grade class of the Claylum Rosalind School came out for a field day. We showcased the work and led them through stations. Students got hands-on experience learning about water quality and the different habitat types in their backyard. So here we are, just over a year after all that work, and the big question we hear is, did it work? Ten months after construction, we took our tour and discovered that much of the disturbed areas are already beginning to heal and the benefits are being realized. The flow in the side channels is continuous. It provides over 2,500 feet of additional habitat for rearing salmon and native trout to eat and grow in while staying connected to the main stem Yakima River. These young fish use the side channels during summer months when the flows are unnaturally high to provide irrigators water. Another benefit is that the river is more connected to the floodplain, providing additional water quality benefits for fish, wildlife, and people. Throughout the side channels, over 53 wood habitat structures were installed, providing luxurious fish hotels, creating flow complexity, and improving the river's connection to its floodplain. This will help turn a relatively sterile reach of the Yakima River into a fish-producing hot zone to ensure that we have continued salmon runs into the future. Over 6.8 acres were planted with native tree and shrub species that will grow to restore riparian areas and filter water before it enters the Yakima River. We planted over 4,800 plants including Douglas fir, ponderosa pine, black cottonwood, willows, dogwood, and other native plants from a local nursery. These plants will provide long-term benefits by shading the river to keep water cool, decreasing erosion, and providing the base of the food web to feed our local salmon populations until they grow big enough to make their trip to the ocean through the Columbia River. To borrow a line from an old movie, Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. Restoration is important to lessen the impacts of climate change and human development. The greatest success happens when there is a diversity of stakeholders involved. Projects like this are creating healthy, working landscapes for fish, wildlife, plants, and people.